This video will introduce the concept of the root mean square value and how to calculate it with integration. The problem with average value is that when you try to use average value for a periodic function, it doesn't give a lot of useful information. So um, when you try to use average value, for periodic relations it usually gives you a center value of equilibrium which isn't all that useful for example if you take a regular sinusoidal variation like y equals 4 sine 3x. If you were to make a graph of this relationship, y versus x, the amplitude of this sinusoidal variation is 4, so it will vary between a maximum of plus 4 and a minimum of minus 4. It's a sinusoidal variation sine function with no phase shift, and so it will start at 0, head up to maximum value of 4 go back down to a minimum value of minus 4 and so on if you were to measure the average y value you'll notice that half the time it is above the x-axis half the time it is below the x-axis it will yield an average value of 0 which is correct but average value is not a good indicator of central tendency if what you're looking for is the behavior away from equilibrium, whether it is positive or negative. An example of an application like that would be an AC voltage. Uh, when you run the electricity one direction through the circuit versus the opposite direction through the circuit, you still have current flow. And so even though the average value is zero, it is only zero at very tiny instants in time. And so in order to, um, or tiny instances in space, whatever the variation is, in order to make a measurement that is a measurement of the average distance away from equilibrium regardless of direction, what we have to do is we have to eliminate the negative deviation of the function below the middle, the, the negative deviation of the function below the middle is exactly balancing the positive deviation above the middle. And so we get a, a, a value, an average deviation of zero. So we can avoid this. So we can um, eliminate negative deviations from the equilibrium by one of the easiest ways to do it would be to square the function. So square your relationship. And when you do that, all of your negatives will become positives. Then we can average that value. So take an average of this square relation. And then to get back to the same scale, we have to take the square root of our answer. So we undo the original squaring and get back to the original scale of the problem. And so if we use S for squaring, and m for mean and r for root, you can see that these three letters produce rms value. And the formula for such a thing is relatively easy. We just follow the steps. If you take any relationship, y equals f of x, 
and you square that relationship. To find the average of this square, remember from the previous discussion on average value, you find the area under this square curve and divide it by the interval width. Divide it by the width of the interval. That will be the average square value. Now take the square root. And there is the formula for root mean square value. So as an example to illustrate this, If I take a, that same sinusoidal variation that we were just dealing with, y equals sine of, or sorry, 4 sine 3x. So let's do an example here. Find the RMS value, so y RMS, of this relation, y equals 4 sine 3x. But let's pick a specific interval from x equals 0 to x equal 2 pi by 3. So that'll give us um, one complete oscillation. So if we make a graph of this, this variation still has a maximum of 4 and a minimum of 4 because the amplitude is still 4. It's a sinusoidal variation, so it will, uh, with no phase shift, will start at zero. It'll head up to its maximum value sine of one when this equals, when x is pi by six. When you hit, um, the sine function comes back to zero, this will be, have to be an argument pi, so that means x is pi by three. And so that means that when x equals 2 pi by 3, we end up with an argument inside the sine function of 2 pi, so that is one complete oscillation. Now if we wanted to guess at the value for uh, the root mean square value, well it has to be between 0 and 4, because we're ignoring negative deviations basically. But if you were to square this function, Squaring it will take the amplitude up to 16. 4 squared is 16. And so the sinusoidal variation is going to reach a maximum value of 16 and come back down to 0, but then the negatives, because they're squared, will also go back to being positive. So you end up with a sinusoidal variation. It's basically shifted up with twice the frequency. And if you take the average value of this, remember average value is just going to give you the middle. The middle here should be about 8. So if we take the square root of that, should it be square root of 8? And it turns out that's uh, exactly what the, the result will be. So to illustrate this, y root mean square using the formula is the area under the square function divided by the interval width. And if we go over one integer number of periods, so integrate this from 0 to 2 pi by 3, 4 sine 3x, remember we have to square the whole relationship, dx, all over 2 pi by 3 minus 0, the 2 pi by 3 in the denominator can become 3 over 2 pi in the numerator, but still in the root. So we have 3 over 2 pi in the numerator. 4 squared is a constant that can come outside of the integral. That's 16. And left inside the integral, we have sine squared 3x dx. The sine squared 3x dx, this is a um, function that is not a power of x. There is no function differential. The differential of sine is cosine. It is not present. 
we do not have a standard form that integrates sine power 2. Um, so we have trigonometric functions in non-standard form, and notice we have sines and or cosines with an even power. Um, and so we would use this identity, sine squared of any angle can be rewritten with the double angle formula, 1 minus cos 2 theta over 2. It'll convert the square sine into a single power cosine, which is a standard form. So we end up with y RMS as 16 divided by 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. So we end up with 24 over pi. And then inside the integral, we're going to replace sine squared of 3x with 1 minus cosine. Double the angle will be 6x over 2. The one-half factor can come outside of the integral. Still inside the root, though. And we have 12 over pi as the leading factor. Limits don't change because we haven't changed the variable. But now we're left with 1 minus cos 6x dx. 1 dx is a regular power rule. Cos 6x is a standard form. And so y RMS will be square root of 12 over pi, integral 0, uh, sorry, we're going to integrate now. So the integral of 1 dx is x. The integral of cosine 6x is sine 6x. But with that linear um, equation 6x, if u equals 6x, du equals 6dx, oh, but I've only got a 1 dx here. So I'm going to end up dividing by 6. That handy little shortcut is going to save you a lot of time when you have linear substitution for the argument inside of transcendental relationships. The limits are still 0 to 2 pi by 3. If we now evaluate this at the upper and lower limits, at the upper limit, x is 2 pi by 3. And we have 1 sixth sine of 12 pi by 3. 6 times 2 pi by 3 is 12 pi by 3. Minus the entire function evaluated at 0 is 0 minus 1 sixth sine 0. And you'll notice sine of 0 happens to be 0. 0 happens to be 0. 12 pi by 3 is the same as 4 pi. Sine of 4 pi is the same as sine of 2 pi, which is the same as sine of 0, which is 0. So all of these are zeros. Um, that's an artifact of integrating over an integer multiple of the period. And we end up with 12 times 2 pi over uh, pi times 3. So that ends up being 12 times 2 pi is 24 pi over 3 pi. You end up with 24 over 3. Why, that's root 8. So the root mean square value here is, in fact, root 8, two point, round it to three digits, that's 2.83.